there is so many ups and downs in sales and in entrepreneurship, running your own business, that if you don't like it, you're going to have a tough time sustaining success and sustaining the results. And so, look, if, if, if you're not excited in the morning and you spring out of bed and, and you have a hard time going to sleep, I want people to find whatever it is. All right, welcome everybody. Today, I'm really excited to have Jazz Takar, a Toronto native, and somebody who I think you're going to find, there's a lot you can learn from because he's one of the people I've met that seems to have a really good grasp on not only how to create material abundance and be successful, but how to enjoy that process. And so everybody's got their own way of doing things. And we're going to talk a little bit about making sure you do things your way. So even though I talk about four day work week, there's different ways you can do it. Sort of the main driving thrust behind this is to have fun, do it your own way. And Jas has been in the sales and service industry for over 25 years. And after he decided to try his hand in real estate, he co-founded the REC. And in the course of 15 years, he successfully propelled his team in the first place position in Canada under Royal LePage. And just from talking with him, his energy is real. Uh, gosh, I've just met him, but everything I can tell, guy's a real deal. And I just love talking with him. So welcome. Thanks so much for coming out today, Jazz. I appreciate it. Uh, you having me, Wade. Uh, and I, I, I truly want to bring as much value as I possibly can to your viewers and listeners. But uh, before we even get started, I wanted to uh, congratulate you, man. Um, I know how hard it is to uh, put out content. And as I've been for the last, I would say, 10 months, I've been on like 55, 56 podcasts um, and, and numerous uh, YouTube videos. And anyone who's putting out content, like I, I, I always have to start off by saying like A, congratulations and B, thank you because we need more people putting out positive and, and, and you know, uh, good vibes out there because I think, as I always say, like attracts like, and I guess that's why you and I are doing this together, and I'm very excited to be on. Awesome. Thank you so much. So first thing, you know, every once in a while, I'll, I'll get a guest that is, connects with me, and I'll look what they're doing. I'm like, wow. So uh, when you all get a chance, definitely check out uh, jastakar.ca to see what he's doing. That's J-A-S-T-A-K-H-A-R.ca. So much of what you're doing, uh, really impressed with what you're up to. So right back at you times 10 or 100 or whatever as far as what you're doing. So that, that's awesome. And one of the things, the biggest sense I got from talking with you when we did the pre-interview was that you truly seem to be, to me, one of those people that has experienced enough success that, well, first of all, you've worked for it. You don't take it for granted. You still want more and yet you're happy. And for me, that's an odd combination. Usually I've met plenty of people that are obsessed with it and are never happy. I've met plenty of people who have some success and like, okay, that was boring. I'm gonna go do something else. But it's rare you find somebody that says, I wanna keep doing this and I wanna keep contributing and I wanna make a difference. And when you and I talked a little bit about, I remember even just talking about the difference between, you know, even the temperament of you um, and, and, and one of your brothers, you know, being slightly different and, and from the other brother and you guys being on slightly different paths, yet all being happy. Maybe just share a little bit about your story, your family, uh, your parents and, and, you know, your upbringing, because I think that'll give people a perspective uh, to where you're coming from. And, and that's so much of what engaged me when I, when I first started talking with you. Yeah, I, look, I, I say it a lot now, Wade, that um, I won the lottery a few times over, and I'm not talking about uh, the Powerballs and the Lotto 649s. I'm talking about really, really the lottery of life. Um, my parents, uh, both still together, both still alive, um, came to Canada back in 1974, um, and uh, my father was a uh, taxi driver pretty much his whole life. My mother worked in a factory uh, pretty much her whole life. And so at a very young age, I, I, I saw firsthand work ethic, right? Like my father being a taxi driver was, his shift was like 24 hours on, 22 hours to be exact, one day. And then uh, the next day was pretty much him sleeping and resting. So it was one day on, one day off, right? Um, still made a lot of time for us, um, but it's not like he was there for soccer games and, and, and basketball games. And even now, like 30 years later, I never look back at that. And I'm not saddened by it. I understood it funny enough. I just, 
I just got it. Like I knew what he was doing. He was working, um, putting away as much money as they possibly can. So I also learned how to pinch pennies at a very young age, which has helped me in business. Um, and I have two older brothers who, uh, uh, it's always a healthy reminder, right? That you're closer to their two older brothers. So it's a healthy reminder that you're closer to the bottom than you are to the top. They've, they've, they really mentored me. Um, one of the, the, the brothers that are about five years older than me, he really was kind of my, the guy who disciplined me. My father, as I mentioned, my mother were really busy. And so he's the one who disciplined me. Um, he kind of went down a path that wasn't positive. Um, definitely a different man now. He had two girls. He has a, a son as well, but the girls really changed his life. Um, and, and just growing up, I, I always knew that I, that, that I was probably going to be doing something in the sales and service industry. Why? Because even at the age of six, seven, first kid to put up his hand when the teacher asked who wanted to help with the book sale or who wanted to sell the ornaments door to door. You know, we didn't even celebrate Christmas, but it was like, I got a chance. Well, it's probably easier now to say, because looking back, it was probably a way to get out of class or do some projects. Or, it was anything not to sit there in, in a chair and learn, um, like in that setting anyways. Um, and then And then 12 years old, 13 years old is when it like really hit home for me because it was the first time I got a paper route and I got paid to knock on those doors to build, you know, again, looking back, I can say I was building relationships. I, I just was knocking on doors and trying to build rapport. I, I learned really quickly, like, okay, I knocked on 10 doors. Those didn't go well. The 11th door, I'm trying to pick up on something as I'm walking to the door, like maybe the color of someone's car, the flowers, something that when they open the door, I can, I can change their, their state make them smile because who likes being you know who likes their door knock at at, at uh 6 30 or 7 o'clock in the evening right but i try to build some type of rapport that connection um and then i went into like shoe sales and banking and car sales and as you mentioned real estate for me now has been 15 years and that's where i've like as i sit here now with a team of 37 realtors 10 support staff we help a little over 700 buyers, sellers, and investors. I do want more. I want, I want to be the number one in team in Canada right across all the brands. Right now, we're number one team under the Canada's largest franchise. And I'm not saying this way or telling uh, 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 people this because I want to impress them. It's really to, to, to showcase the drive that I do have. You know, you use the word obsession. There is definitely an obsession, but it's 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 swayed to like now watching my di my direct reports them becoming leaders. Like it's a, it's it's so fun to see. I was sitting with uh, Tyler and Laura, who are two of my directors. Um, one director of real estate concierge services, another director of sales and marketing, and like they have people that are reporting to them now. Like I'm kind of out of it, right? And it's nice to see because you know I was a little scared, like when they become the ones that are quote unquote off the bosses or the leaders, are they going to change who they were? Um, like did all that time that I spent, are they going to, are they going to do it the way that I was doing? And I'm not talking about hundred percent, but at least some aspects of it. It's so refreshing to see, like they didn't change. They're, they're still the same people. And that's fun to see now, like as a leader to develop other leaders. Um, I'm, I'm really addicted to that now. Well, that and that's maybe that's you just nailed that's what it was because that was the like I said there was something that to me when I spoke with you that was more than just okay the guy's successful real estate because that's and and that's not to discredit that obviously you've worked hard for that but there are people that have that and then when you say okay hey I want to introduce this person to my audience say hey do something like this guy's doing you say well okay I'm not sure and that was the thing now that and you you said it a different way is you know excited about helping other people become leaders, excited about helping other people grow, excited about helping other people succeed. And, you know, this is something where, and I invite the people in my audience to, to take in a few different things from this, because sometimes, again, as somebody who, you know, I use the word four day work week, just to simply mean work life, harmony, doing what you want to do. There is no judgment. There's no magic to number four. It might be three. It might be six. It might be whatever. As long as you're getting to do what makes you happy. Um, but of course, that's a that's a phrase that people kind of resonate with. If I yeah. was a three day weekend, people would think bungee jumping and and and, and Red Bull. So I've got you know it's, everything's got its own thing. But one of the things that there's a few people that have this, and and from what I can tell, you have this is there's this genuine sense of enjoying 
the process of watching people experience either great service or great sales where there's actually like the same way like if you watch your child enjoy something you kind of experience it vicariously through them and that's something that i think i mean where does that come from for you is that love is that just excellence or what makes you want to help other people do better or be better what do you think drives that for you well to that point, um, it's, it, I, I think it's because my, my cup got filled a long time ago, right? I am so, again, talking about winning the lottery in so many different aspects. My father and mother worked very hard, but to this day, we still kiss. Um, but I, I can, like I'm getting goosebumps kind of thinking about it as a, as a child, my dad coming into my bed, my mom coming into my bed and kissing me. And, you know, sometimes it's like, ah, get out of here. I don't want this anymore, right? But it like they did this at a very young age, lots of hugs and now like they, they saw my report cards and some I didn't let them see, but most of them they saw, um, they probably knew, okay, we're not gonna have a doctor, engineer, lawyer. I mean, in the East Indian community, that's kind of one of the three that you, you, you want your kids to be is that doctor, lawyer, engineer, and pretty much in that order as well. Um, and they, I think they probably, I've never even spoken to them about it, but I'm, I know they knew. However, they never told me that I wasn't good enough. Like those words never got uttered out of their mouth. They, they, they actually told me the exact opposite. You'll figure it out. You're good. Don't worry. Like be, be a kind person. And so for me, because my cup got filled at a very young age and it continuously did, and then I started to get results in actually sales, I, I now, I want other people to, to enjoy that. We were talking off here just before we started, wait. What happened is, is that like we had our Canadian Thanksgiving um, and a, a couple of days ago, actually yesterday, sorry. Um, and I still came in, like I still came in and my, the, my, my director still came in. Why? Because it was like, okay, like we had a couple of days off. We want to get, we want to keep the momentum going. We didn't go for our regular eight, nine, 10 hours a day. We came in for four hours. We had a complete brainstorming session. Now, I never said you guys have to come in. I told them, Hey, I'm going to be in, I need the quiet space. I wanted to have the quiet space, but once they said that they were interested in coming, I was like, let's go, let's all, let's all do this together. And th that comes from really enjoying the process because there is so many ups and downs and sales and, and entrepreneurship, running your own business, that if you don't like it, you're going to have a tough time sustaining success and sustaining the results. And so look, if, if, if you're not excited in the morning, and you spring out of bed and, and you have a hard time going to sleep, I want people to find whatever it is, right? So I tell my salespeople all the time, like if you're not excited about this business or to a real estate investor, you know, almost on every phone call, I, I end off the phone call when we're like, once they actually moved on on opportunity, like Wade the investor, if you're not excited about this, let's not do this. Like this isn't, this shouldn't be a conversation about me trying to push you over the fence, so to speak. Like, I want you so excited that you can't wait to get another one. And if you're a salesperson in my organization, it's like, if this doesn't excite you every single day, we just need, let's, you should do something else. Like life is short on one end, life is also long on the other end, right? Like in terms of like, you got a lot of time. I'm 38 years old now. I got at least, I'm thinking, knock on wood, I got another 50 years of this energy coming at it every single day. Um, if the, the second way I like, I'm not happy to come in here because I don't want to see uh, Steven's face or Laura's face or Tyler's face or Luke's face. Like I'm done. I'm going to shift. I'm going to go do something else. It's the exact same thing that happened when I was in car sales. Exact same thing happened when I was working at the bank. It was like a day or two of not feeling well, like that pit in my stomach, like, oh, I'm not enjoying this. Within that week, I left and I moved on to something else because I truly am chasing happiness all the time, like continuous happiness. And, 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 and so I think that's why I also attract a lot of it as well. That's awesome. That's something I remember I heard Deepak Chopra say years ago, he'd say, trust your soul's desire. See, a lot of people get caught up in judging like, okay, well, you know, oh, well, why did you leave that job? You, you, you reckless, you this, like all these voices. And I can think of one of the jobs I left and I have a master's in psychology. So the symptoms I had, you would call a panic attack, but I'd mm. been having them for about two, three months. I'd scheduled ahead of time that I was leaving the job and I'd been having them kind of like, just more like a little shortness of breath. Like I knew it was time for me to move on. And this is the other part. 
nothing wrong with the company I worked with, still love the people. Still, so, so this was not a, oh, it's you, it's you did something bad, all good. But it was, it was just time for me to move on and do something different with all the love in my heart. And, and what you said too about doing things well and doing things a certain way and, and being passionate about them and, and not getting caught up in the definitions. So many people are getting caught up in the definitions of what it's supposed to look like. And I sometimes even have to remind people like, look, there's a certain way I do entrepreneurialism. There's a certain way I do parenting. It doesn't mean I'm right. It works hmm. for me. And based on what I can tell, it's, it's, it seems to be good for, for my style. But I think there's something a lot of people see, and I hear Gary Vee talk about this a lot of, you know, so many people think that they want to be an entrepreneur. It's kind of like the new firefighter or the new yeah. NBA star. It's like, no, being an entrepreneur really can, can be really difficult at times. And so if you're not, if you don't enjoy it, to a lot of people, it's like, well, yeah, this sucks. It's like, well, well, hold on. Well, do you like, do you like the challenge? Well, no, I really don't like the challenge. I want something steady. Well, then, entrepreneur, that's that's not what that is. No, for sure. Like, I mean, it's it it's tough, right? To 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 have that final decision kind of lie on you at the end of the day. Like, I mean, the staff that I have, they're I I, I wouldn't want to do this right now in my life with anyone else other than the people that I have around me. But at the end of the day, they are all going to get paid right? They know if something doesn't go wrong, they can all look at me, you know, especially the crew that I like is with me on a day to day basis, where myself, I always have to look at like, at the end of the day, I, I, I only have myself to blame. And so people get into this, like, ah, this is going to be the best, I'm going to be my own boss, I'm going to be my own boss. But then you realize that boss is not someone that you want to work for yourself, right? And so I look, there's nothing wrong with trying it, test it out, see what you like, see what you don't like, like a buffet. I mean, I always use that uh, example. Take a little bit, try a little bit, see what you like, then go back for seconds. And that's really like trying to find your passion. For me, that's, I got, again, really, really blessed that I kind of knew from a young age, but I come across a lot of people that they're just, they're just like, haven't figured it out. You'll know, but you got to try an, enough things to get an idea of what you like and what you don't like. Yeah, something you said, and I'm going to tie in two points and, and let you run with this if you want. So when you and I talked ahead of time, we said we're going to talk about how you increase sales by creating great customer service. And I, and I definitely want us to get to that. What I'm sensing that, I, that to me, though, is the core of this is you're enjoying this whole process. And there's not a math to it. There's not a formula to it. You're present with this. And you're looking to, of course, provide service to a certain level. Obviously, there's certain things of... Um, repetitive processes, you know, SOPs that we set up to say, okay, this works, we're going to keep doing that. But there's also this sense of newness and discovery and, hey, I wonder how this will work out. How do you balance doing that with, as you're starting to, like you said, share responsibilities with people where, you know, there's that little voice as the entrepreneur says, okay, I actually want it done exactly the way I do it. I mean, you know, you do it your way, but you're kind of thinking, yeah, but I still do it the best. What's it like and what does it feel like? I'm imagining you've had this happen because I've had this happen and it's one of the coolest feelings and yet it's humbling when you say to somebody, okay, go do this and you actually pull off the reins a little bit and they do it better than you did. What's that feel like? To share a little about that because that's something I think most I mean, people don't get yet and they have a hard time with. Yeah, so I think the one, like I... 3% of things I'm really good at, 97% of things. Like I, I'm very self-aware, I suck at, right? Like I, I have a bunch of shelves behind me here. Like I could not have put any of these shelves up myself. I mean, you do not want to hammer in Jazz's hand. That's just not what I, I'm not good at that. And so I've always needed people around me. I like to delegate a lot um, and I'm just okay with the result. Like if somebody's moved the needle in what we're looking into doing even slightly, to me, it's a, it, it's a win because by me doing it myself, that now is not allowing me to come up with new ideas, even execute or to even do a podcast like this. As I'm doing a podcast, I have six, seven team members that are seeing my, in my vision right now. They're all working on something, some very like they're doing it together or they're doing something individually to move the needle in our business, content creation, more sales, more relationships. So when I see Look, I mean, I get started by the day, like with the day knowing that whatever I delegated, chances are they're doing it way better than I could ever do it. Now, the one or two things that it did take me a little while to get used to is actually sales. 
like actually selling that because that's my core expertise. That's like, oh, letting that go was tough at the start, but now it's the only way that I can scale out, right? Like I have other ideas that I want to start implementing other than just real estate sales. And so I've had to let that go. And the number one, number one uh, piece of advice that I can give someone to scale is that you need to leave money on the table and just be okay with it. You have to be okay to leave money on the table because you've got to pay somebody to do whatever you need to get done. And yeah, like, you know, I got interns who are unpaid interns um, that want to be around the culture and the environment. That's not going to last. Like I've been, I've had interns around me for the last three years on a, on a regular basis. They don't like, you got to pay them at some point, especially the ones that want that, that you want to have around you know, full time. And so you have to leave money on the table. I think that's where people get stuck. Like there, there's a part of people getting stuck. Like I don't want to let go, but I actually think it comes from, I don't want to let go of the money. Well, I can do it myself. Why am I going to pay Luke to do that for me? What you don't realize is what are you, what's the opportunity cost with you not letting something go? Yeah, no, and that I think that's so it because and, and I like the way you work. Because a lot of people talk opportunity cost, and to a lot of people, that's an intangible thing. Um, it, they get it, but it's kind of out here. And you know, opportunity cost could be you could have spent time with your family and kids. Opportunity cost could have been you could have started another business. You could have gone to a spiritual retreat. You could like there's it, it could be anything. One of the things I find when I'm at my worst, I do have that FOMO voice. Like, well, what did I miss out on? I, I did this and I did that. Well, that's life. You married, you know, Susie, not Betty. You, exactly. you know, you, you decided to be a soccer player, not a baseball player, whatever it is. There's by definition, other than alternate universes, you make one choice It by necessity, you know, turns off another. And I think some of the best entrepreneurs I've seen, I think of my brother, I think of my father and they almost do this mind trick where they say, well, I couldn't have done other stuff. And, and somewhere they actually know they could have. I actually, dude, come on, you could have done other stuff. But they almost say, but no, but wait, that's kind of like what I tell myself because I can't allow that voice. Because oh, if I let it, if I give that voice the stage, it'll grab the mic, it'll be on the stage all done. Well, you know, this could happen. And like you said, and the money on the table, my gosh, you're going to leave money on the table. It's like when people say, you're going to babysit our kid, right? Right. We'll be back in four hours, right? Or five hours, right? And then you come back, oh, well, you know, you didn't do this. Like, you yeah. kidding me? You got your kid back. Everything's good. You yeah. went out, you did what you wanted, and you're actually going to gripe about, well, you know, they gave them, I don't know, the Honey Nut Cheerios, not the Whole Grain Cheerios. Like, sure, for seriously? sure. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we dwell on it too much, right? Like what decision you could have made. Um, but I'm here to tell anybody who's watching or listening right now, if you want more. And that might, and I love what you said, Wade, like it might be that you want to spend more time with your family. So you have to give the cutting of the grass and the, and the shoveling of the snow to somebody else to do. Now, if you enjoy that, you know, shout out to my, one of my older brothers who I think he cuts like four or five houses, uh, grass around him. And he does it for free. He doesn't charge anyone. He just loves it. Has a beer, has a headset on, he's listening to audio books or what, a podcast, whatever he's doing. Um, but he enjoys it. Me, I hate it. I do not want to touch the grass. I'll do anything but actually cut the grass and shovel the snow. Now, I, I replace that time that I got back with 80% of the time, it's, 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 I'm here, I'm doing a podcast, I'm, I'm on the phone building relationships. The other 20 or 30%, whatever it may be, I'm spending it with my family. Or if I'm, I, it could just be I'm doing nothing. I'm lying down and I'm resting, but there's no way I'm going to cut the grass or shovel the snow unless like I had to do it. So you get to buy yourself some extra time. And look, if you are, especially if you know, use round numbers, if you make, call it $50 an hour, right? And, and you can pay somebody to do a $20 an hour job, you're still netting 30 bucks an hour. Like you're still saving, you got to really think it through, right? Um, and so to end, like I had to be a delegator, as I mentioned, because there's a majority of stuff I can't do on my own. So I feel very lucky about that, because I don't waste a lot of time trying to do things. Um, I only as much as I can, as much as I can, I stay in a state of happiness, doing things that make me happy because like, I just don't see any other way. Why would I want to do something that doesn't make me happy? That's great. And I think that that's a perfect segue to start going into more of the providing great customer service. Cause again, I see, I, and I, I work with a lot of uh, entrepreneurs on, 
how they compensate their team members. So I have a software that relates to that. And if you want to learn about how people see the world, look at how they compensate their team members in the sense of, we just had a great year. What do we do with that? And some of them are like, dude, we just had a great year or we might have a great year. Boom, let's give them more opportunities. Let's, and, 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 and not, not charity, but like, hey, let's hang some more carrots at this level or that level or whatever it is. Let's, let's find a way that we can recognize and whether it's with money, paid time off, whatever, let's find a way that we can create opportunity for them. And then you see some people that they just don't like what they're doing. And mm -hmm. so then it just turns into they, 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 the employees, they, and, 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 and literally, you know, so much of it becomes, well, they're this and they're not of my level. Well, okay. First of all, if you're going to be the owner at a certain level, entrepreneurially speaking, not as a quality of a human, but as an entrepreneur, well, by definition, the people that you hire to be employees, even if they're on their way up are currently at a, at not at the same level as you. That's otherwise they, they wouldn't be your employee. Mm -hmm. There's like this whole resentment with the system. And so when it comes to cu customer service, you just see this like, oh, there's a client on the phone. Tell me about the client. Yeah, he's been with me 20 years. He's a pain in the ass. He's been with you 20 years. Yeah. And, and you resent that? So how does it for you, you're, you talk about wanting or, or doing your best to be in a joyful state. How does that carry over to how you create fellow or, or additional leaders? And then also how you provide customer service. And I think the biggest test is how the people who work with you or for you then do that, you know, the same way a child watches the parents and does their best. How does that, how does that become contagious in your so, organization? For, like I probably spend 60% of my day uh, just in and around my team um, uh, and, and the staff that's with me, making sure that they're right. What do, like, what do I mean by that? That A, that they're in a good state. Is it every single day? No, but I'm going to say as close as 95% of the time, any of my team members are around. They're just in a very positive state. We have a lot of fun here. The culture that I think that I've, I, I started was of, of fun. Let's ha enjoy what we do. And if you don't enjoy what we do, that's okay. Like, well, I'll find something else for you. Get on the bus and we'll find you a seat or I'm going to try my best to do it. I mean, I can't promise the world to you, right? And what I what I came to learn over the last three years, three and a half years, that it's not always money for people. You know, like like for 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 Tyler, for example, been with me for six, seven years. At the start, it was money. Younger guy, 22 years old, 23 years old. When he came with me, he's 28, 29, married, has a kid. All for him, it was was about at one point he transitioned and said, I don't want the money. Like, I just want a nine to five gig. I want to do it from the office. I don't want to leave because he was a sales guy out and about 12 hours, all that. And now I just want to uh, uh, jazz, make some phone calls, get home and, 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 and get that time with my family. So I was able to reverse engineer a role for him. Okay. Um, I have Luke, who's a 19 year old or 20 year old now phenom. I call him my phenom. He wants to put in 20 hours a day and I got to pull that back. Cause I know that's not going to, you know, I got to be careful with him because he's young and he, he's excited and he's passionate. I, I'm trying to teach him that this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, and so he's different. I have Laura, my director of sales and marketing. She's very smart, educated. She It's not the money for her. Maybe at the start it was like, I want to show my value. And then she wanted to make sure that she got compensated for her value. Now it's about, okay, can I do other things? Can I grow other things? Can I start other things? So I'm always trying to keep her motivated with trying different things. She might have a bad day. I need to get her a burger. I kind of know my team. I know, you know, Tyler, day off. Just need, give, give him a day off, get him away from phone calls. Steven, my, my, my creative director, like, don't talk to him majority of the day, not because he's, he's, he's a rude guy. He's a teddy bear sweetheart of a guy, but that's how he works. He works really, really well with his headsets on music on, and we can, you know, maybe first thing in the morning, him and I talk for 10, 15 minutes, throw just some ideas at each other. And then like, I see him across the hall right now. He has his headsets on, he's chilling, he's doing his thing. So I first wanted to build it from the ground up, meaning, my staff, I want them in the most positive, optimistic state of mind before the day gets started. Why? Because if my staff is taken care of, they will take care of my clients. But it's employees first, like staff first, hands down, okay? Then when I think about clients and my client business, 
because I've been doing sales and service weight for 25 years, I know, and it doesn't take a genius, anybody listening to your podcast knows that the, the, the best way to build a business is through word of mouth. Build sales organization is through word of mouth. I just spend a lot of time um, on, on providing white glove service to my clients in the real estate industry. Not that it's foreign. I mean, a lot of other uh, firms do it. I like to think that we are in the pursuit of per for perfection, knowing that we're not going to hit perfection, but we're on our way there. We're always trying to find new ways to not only meet clients' expectations, but to exceed them, right? And so we want to think of high level, providing world-class service, we then want to think of uh, uh, exceeding clients' expectations. How do you exceed client people's expectations in general? Ask them what they are and then exceed them. And so, so the old adage of under promising and over delivering is something we really take to heart here. Um, we'll pick up checks for people. Um, doesn't matter where they are in the city, in the province, just to remove the friction in the process of buying and, and, and like, I don't think I'm that good in sales personally, like selling stuff. I think what I found a niche in is making it easy for people to buy. And I'm, I'm not trying to have a play on words there. It really is that, right? It's just like, how do I remove the friction in the process of, of this transaction? And to exceed it, how do I possibly, in the time frame that we're together, it might be three months, it might be six months, it might be two days, some of our investment opportunities take that, like it, it only takes 48 hours to get it done. How can I exceed also your expectations and sorry, remove the friction in your life? Because you might be having a hard day with the investor. Let me try to take some workload off of your life. And then third is, is thinking long-term. And so I'm always thinking long-term in my business because I need to make sure whatever world-class service I'm providing, i.e. we offer a real estate concierge service at no cost, meaning we'll find service providers, plumbers, electricians right across the country at no cost. Before we actually launched that, I had to make sure it was sustainable for me personally in my business first and foremost, because if it's not, it's not going to last long for the client. So it doesn't make sense. And then you're always thinking long-term with, from the client's perspective, which is look, wait, this is not a good time for you to, 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 to invest. And I have probably a hundred clients right now that would purchase another type of investment strategy with me. Like right now, if I called them, but I've actually held them back to say, you can't buy anymore because you have too much in the future bucket, meaning it's too much speculation and they're floored. They're like, what the heck are you talking about, Jazz? We want to buy more. Why are you telling us not more? I'm like, no, no, you can invest in real estate, but not in this strategy, right? And so you're always thinking long-term. Why? Because do not cut off the golden goose's head to get all the golden eggs. It will continue to lay that your client base, your, 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 your database, what we call our REC insiders, they will introduce you to more people over and over again. And it is the, the cheapest way to build a business is through word of mouth. Well, yeah, and that, <clears throat> that's the thing that people don't see. And I guess I see it. My father's an insurance agency owner. So that's you know, the just the quintessential residual income model. And, sure. and everything is about at least a five-year client, any less than a five-year client. And you're, you're really in that industry, you're, you're not doing a good job. You know, you're talking more like 10-year clients, 20-year clients. And just what you said about removing the friction. One of my uh, mentors used to say, you know, you got to make it easy for people to say yes. Just really, just easy. And, and again, it, it was little things like you say, it, it was not persuasion because then that comes across very clear as, as you know, where are you coming from? Why are you coming at me? Why are you trying something? Salesy, salesy. Oh, exactly. Well, and, 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 and for gosh, if anybody's not realizing, I mean, okay, I'm 49. I'm a little bit older than you. But most of the stuff, especially if you're talking to people who are in banking, insurance, and real estate, those three industries invented all the sales word tracks. All the today or tomorrow or this or that or all this yeah, other yeah. stuff. And hey, yeah. how many give you ask you a question that sounds idiotic that you're going to say yes to and then you're going to say yes to. I'm going to build momentum. Then I'm going to close. It's like, dude, come on, man. It doesn't work in the dating world with the gal you want to marry. It might work yeah. with other people. It doesn't work. It's, it's just such a short term. It's a hack in the truest sense of the word. It's not a strategy. It's not a fundamental but going back to what I like that you're saying that's so true is if you're building that database or those relationships, if and when you decide to shift and people get so fearful, it's like, wait, I don't like this industry right now. Yeah. You still serve the people you're in front of because even more so when you decide to shift and they say, how long were you looking to leave? Oh, I've been looking to leave for five years. Wow. 
you just left. Yeah. Well, you've, you've done me right for the last five years. Yes. Because I said I would, and that's character. And then when you go to your next deal, shocker, it's not a big deal. And I'm, I know, you know, this so few people that deliver with who they're in front of. And then they, they're already looking at the next person. It's like, no, you get to that next person by delivering. I, I always, I always talk about um, that the average person knows probably about 200 people. And so do you know 200 people that knows 200 people that know 200 people? Your network now is 40,000 people. So next time you speak with somebody first, for anybody who's watching and listening right now, think about all the people that that person knows. And, and, and now, because you're thinking about it from a long-term perspective, you probably won't be so transactional in your head space. Like, how do I get this deal done? How do I close Wade right now? It's like, no, how do I open more doors and opportunity? How, how do I get to a place where Wade opens up more doors for me and opportunities for me. And you'll, you, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, you'll have to tell Wade that it's not the right time to buy because it might not be the right time to buy yet. Yet he will respect you more. He's going to want to introduce you to more business and he's going to come back because he's going he's gonna to have built that relationship. So for me, it's all relationship building. It's not about the one transaction because one transaction now just won't change the course of my life anymore. Like it just does not change the course of my life. I mean, real estate's a high ticket. Don't get me wrong from a commission's perspective. But even then, the one deal just does not change the course of my life. What will is Wade's network. Because now that's going to feed the rest of my life. I, I was in the car business 20, 18, 19 years ago. Okay, I started in the car business 19 years ago. I was there for three years. And then I still have people who bought cars from me, Wade, that buy real estate from me, right? And, and, and that happens because they know I took care of them. Look, if I stay in real estate and just stayed in real estate sales for the rest of my life, I have a feeling my two little boys, seven and four now, almost five, they can take my book of business if they want it because the relationships are so strong. More importantly, if I decide to start in the mic business and start selling mics, and that's the, kind of the business I'm in, I have a feeling my little under 10,000 people that I stay in uh, constant communication with on you know, a couple of times a month, I have a feeling 10 of them will probably introduce me with somebody that they know that needs to buy mics. Like that's how, for me, that's how I built it. That's how I'm building it. It really, it really was from the ground up. Um, and, and, and that's what excites me, man. Like I, I love meeting new people that come into our world. That's never heard of us before, but damn, do I ever like, like, I think my favorite part is when Wade tells, uh, uh, uh Joe Blow and Joe Blow tells Mary Jane and, and then all four of us, obviously not now, but we can all go for dinner and we just talk. How do you know this person? How do you know that person? And they've all done business with me. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, I, I really love your perspective and your energy and your excitement about it. I think that's something that can be so easily lost. And again, just having met you, but seeing your energy towards it seems to me like you've dialed in what that 3% is, because yeah. that you should be doing because as somebody who's at different times, had employees, not employed, not had employees, been an employee, um, there's certain trade offs. Uh, at one stage of my life, I was really growing my business aggressively, had more team members. Then I went more of a, okay, I want some time. And that's how I chose that I wanted to do it. And then now my kids are 14, 11. So I'm getting to spend more time, you know, so now, even though it's four days, it's more like it used to be four sevens or four eights. It's more like four nines or four tens. And I'm enjoying that. But to your point, I'm doing it the way usually I, I get to choose to, and it's allowing me and it's not even the word pivot. It's more just expand my horizons or, or get better at certain things. Um, Especially when you get that, like it, when you have some free time, I'm sure those three other days, you're probably more creative, right? You sharpened your saw, right? Um, for me, I think I just, I love this so much. And I, like, I can't, like, I, I'm so excited to take this to new heights and do other things that I'm working on that for me, that is my hobby. Like, Sometimes when I go on vacation for 10 days, um, which is rare, but there's been times, you know, maybe eight to 10 days, you know, first couple of days, I'm full of anxiety, man. Like I'm so anxious. I don't know what the heck to do with myself, right? Like, and I can't go anywhere. Like I need to work. That's what I, I like 
working. It probably, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree in this sense, because it's exactly what my, both my parents did. So I saw that. Um, and look, I mean, my kids, as I mentioned, are seven and almost five. I'm finding hacks now, right? I'm in the process of figuring out like, okay, like my seven-year-old, for example, like I can take him to a Raptors game and get him front seat like front uh, court tickets and it's not going to make it's not going to be a dent in my bank account it's not going to be a big deal for me to do that i'm able to do that because of the time that i put in right like my father was never there for my soccer game let alone take me to a game like that just wasn't even you know and i'm able to offer and 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 what my kids are going to have available to them it's just a little bit better now like like they they go on nicer trips um we spend more time together on in, in nicer places and then and i think they're they, they get better experiences you know like my father taking us to mcdonald's was the best like, in, like no word like no like not a word of a lie there like the best experience i had with my parents was going to mcdonald's and getting a happy meal right um and but that meant a lot i mean that was hard for my parents to do because we ate at home every single day so the mcdonald's once a month or whatever it was that my parents got me it was it was very special right now some of the, the experiences i'm having with my kids are just at a little bit of higher level now well and you know the thing i hear though too is you seem to enjoy giving in your work and outside of your work so i remember there's this thing it's funny i was working in insurance claims for a company. I was a claims adjuster with people who get injured. And <clears throat> I told my mom, okay, I'm tired of this. These people just want money. They're just money focused. Like I'm like 22 at the time. So all they're interested in money. I said, I'm quitting this and I'm going to India to help people. Cause you have to go to India to help people. You can't be in the United States and help people. You have to go somewhere else to help yeah. people. Yeah. She yeah. goes, wait, tell me something. Because <clears throat> the people you're working with, what's going on? I said, well, they've been in an accident, they're injured. She said, what's their emotional state? Well, they're kind of scared. They think they're going to be done wrong by the insurance company or the lawyer, or this or that. How are they physically feeling? Well, some of them are actually hurt. Uh, she goes, and, and what's it like? Well, I get paid. So great, get your ass back and then go do your job. And you can send a check to India or you can volunteer on the weekends. And so I think when you find what it is, how you give, like I tell people, I give four days to my clients. And I give three days to my family myself. And, but they're of a similar, I mean, I'm a type A-ish guy. That's so, you know, when I'm at the Y getting, you know, technical fouls, which is not easy to do as the coach, you know, but getting the calls, I got the calls, the calls yeah. started coming in when they, they finally called the calls. But so, yeah, dude, it's not like I just all of a sudden turn it off. People say, oh, you're right. no, I'm just choosing to take that into a different arena. And I do a lot of personal growth work and stuff. I just kind of, for me, because I... I'm a smart rat. I can convince myself and okay, wait, I'll just work Thursday and Friday. For me, it would bleed over. So I said yeah. these things and that's, again, that's not a judgment. That's what I need. And in doing that, it allows me then to do that. And then when I say, okay, Friday, I'm playing volleyball, no matter what, okay, I'm at the beach. Great. I'm, I'm, and it's just, that's what works for me. But I think all of it to you is what I'm seeing. You know, you, you and I talked about what are some of the things you think that have been most important powerful insights you've meant learned and one you said is that giving without expecting anything in return yeah is always the best ROI and I'm seeing that in your business share a little bit more about that if you don't mind yeah look I mean for me I um as I mentioned earlier Wade I, I my, my cup is filled now right and so now I spend a lot of my time wanting to just give to others what I know um that's through um the investments I I made in real estate. I'm educating people on how they can do it. I actually say it a lot in my content from an investing perspective. Like, it's nice people have 50 doors, 100 doors, 500 doors. I mean, if you just get one, that changed the course of my life. If I stopped that one, that would have been that that I would have grown my net worth more than if I never bought the one, right? And so that's 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 the first thing that I like to do a lot of is educate people through real estate. The second thing is is that I give a lot to my team members, right? Um, anything that I've learned, they're learning through my mistakes as well because I'm making a lot of them. We start we start a lot of projects here, um, and then we just realize, hey, this is not the right track, and. Nobody really beats each other up, um, uh, uh, but I'm willing to give the opportunity, especially for my younger people, like the interns, for, to, for them to use me as a trampoline. Like, come here. The culture's awesome. Learn from some of our older people and more experienced people that are on the team, but use us as a trampoline. And what do I mean by that? Like, create content. Put your name on it. I don't want the, I don't care for 
the the lights in that sense like especially now i'm on a lot of podcasts i do a lot of videos and so i'm out there a lot and so for me i mean i i just know that the more that you give the more that you get now like that's like this is proven i'm living it the more the, the 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 more leads I give to my team, the more that I'm getting in, right? Rather than holding it and hoarding them all for myself, it's like no, here everyone can eat now. The pie's big enough, and if we ever ran out of pies, we'll just bake some more. That's awesome, man. Cool. One of the other things that you mentioned that I think really was something that people have a hard time with, or they play with, or they sometimes try to strategize it, and I don't think it's necessarily something that you strategize and it's something you address is when a client's uncertain or scared or dissatisfied with, with what they're getting from you or your team or what you're offering, how do you address that? I mean, head on, head on. We, uh, uh, we ask what the problem is and how we can help. And we, it all comes back for us. It, it comes back to removing the friction. I, I'll take a, I'll take a hit on a deal um, like where I was going to make X and now I'm going to lose in the deal, I'm, I'm okay with that. Why? Because I just know the, 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 the lifetime value of a client. You mentioned in insurance, it's five years. For me in real estate, it's a lot longer than that because the average person now in real estate probably buys a home. It used to be five years. It's closer to seven. Now people are just staying in their homes longer, but I, I do a lot of investing in real like I help people with investing in real estate, right? Um, and so the lifetime value of a client um, is a lot more than the one commission, right? And so um, I make sure that A, we don't have commission breath. That's a mindset thing around here. We just, we don't have the commission breath. We, we, we provide world-class service. We try to, to, to always exceed clients' expectations, as I mentioned, but you're not going to get it right with the amount of, okay, we have over 700 transactions we did last year. I'm not going to sit here line and say every single one of them, they were ecstatic. No, they weren't, but we tried our best. We asked you know, what, how can we get better? Um, and then next time around, that's exactly what we're pushing for. So we, we head on, we, we deal with our problems head on. Most of the time we just throw money at it anyways. Like cause it's usually like they weren't happy with the, uh, it wasn't done in a timely manner. And so we're just going to next time around, we're going to get a courier to do more things like whatever it takes to, to make people smile, to make people say, look, I understand. We, we, I like those problems because I know that there's holes to cover. And I've always been a strong believer that when a problem comes up with a client, that's your time to shine. You know, like when you go to a restaurant and the wait, waiter or the waitress asks you like, how was the food? 99% of the time people say, oh, so it was okay. Cause we don't want that confrontation, right? That's actually the worst thing that can happen to a restaurant owner because we know that Humans don't want the confrontation, so they don't tell you that the food wasn't all that. They just don't want to deal with the repercussions of whatever it may be, extra time that you got to speak to the waiter or the waitress. You're just like, you want to move on. So I'm, I'm always looking for times where someone, a client had a problem with us, didn't like the service, because that's how we're going to get better. So, you know, there's, we, we, we use a word here, kaizen which is a Japanese word for constant and never ending improvement. And, and so we're, I know it's taken by Toyota. I mean, they, they really live by it. Um, and so we try, we try to do the same thing here. We're not perfect, but we are in the pursuit of it. That's awesome. Yeah. And one of the things you said about like the restaurant example, I think so many people really, we haven't, I don't even know if I see this sometimes with kids, the emotional intelligence to even say, Hey, Jazz, I liked this part this one part could have been a little better. And obviously, if you hated it, you might not say it quite that way. You might, you know, you might say, oh, I'll try different. I mean, there's different ways to do it. But I think two things. Number one, people are feeling so rushed. So somebody, my, my knee jerk reaction would be to say, well, people are selfish. No, people feel so rushed. Like, I don't have time. I gotta get somewhere else. And they're, and they're so not present. And I know that's such a huge deal to, to being um, able to deliver well for people. Tell me this on the flip side, what is it either with, a team member, you know, an employee and or a client, at what point do you know, okay, white glove service ain't going to get it. We just need to move on. What, what, where's that, where's that line for you where you'd say, okay, we've done what we can. Um, it's where you say, no, you know what? They're, they're just committed. This client, this team member, they're just committed to not getting it, to fighting, to arguing or whatever. What do the signs look like that? Cause sometimes people hear this like, oh, this sounds great, but 
I imagine somewhere you have a line. What's that line yeah, for you? I think with, with, with a team member, I mean, if it's a, uh, if it's a couple of weeks that uh, just coming in with not the right attitude, like any one of my team members on a daily basis, wait, when the second they walk in, the way they say my name, the way they say, Hey, the way like we all have our own handshakes with each other. Um, I could feel it. You know what I mean? I could feel like if something's not right. If that were to continue on for six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days in a row, we're having a conversation because it's just like, I, I like, I upbeat, upbeat uh, uh, environments. And only because we're doing this podcast, there's no music playing, you know? Um, and so we, we, we like to have a lot of fun around here. And so if that lasts for a while, then I know something's going on is chances are they're just not happy with the role that they're in. I'll try to reverse them, engineer them into a different role. And if that doesn't work, then it's just time that we move on just like any other relationship, right? Yeah. Friendship, relationship, there's, um, so, sometimes there is uh, a deadline to these things. And, and, and I hate to see people go, um, but a part of me is excited for them because now they're gonna be happier, hopefully somewhere else. With a client, um, it comes up, it comes up uh, more than you would think. I mean, where a client is just, no matter what you do, you're not going to, forget exceed their expectations. You're not even going to meet their expectations. And so I like to, as I mentioned, I like to ask a lot, like, Hey, what are your expectations? And I try to nip it in the butt right at the start. Because if someone says, well, I want to purchase, I want to be able to purchase a home in this area for $300,000. I want to done it in this time. And I want this many, these many bedrooms or whatever. Sorry, client. It's just, it can't happen. Let's not work together. Um, and I'll kind of release you kind, right? Stay in touch with us. Take our information. No problem. You can work with anyone you want. Sometimes we get a little bit further into the, into the process of a possible transaction. And, 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 and I might hear that, uh, that, that they're just not happy and I'll just let them go. And I'll say, look, just like in life, right? Like, I mean, as I mentioned, we don't deal with we deal with unreasonable people. I tell a client all the time, this is just one of those situations. It's okay. Let's just move on now. Let's not waste each other's time. That's why I love content, actually. I, I think the number one, I've been producing 20 pieces of content daily on all the platforms for the last, I would say, year, year and a half. Overall, um, it's been probably closer to two years. And what the biggest shift I found after 25 years of sales and service, wait, is that... I don't get a lot of people that come into my wheelhouse now that haven't yet got a little taste of me, right? And so for that, um, that, that is why I like content, man, because now you got a taste of me. Now you're able to make a decision. If you liked, if you, if, if you come meet me at the office and you've seen my content, chances are we're going to get, get along because you saw me, like, you know, I'm a real estate broker. You know, I help with investments. You know, I don't wear suits. Not that there's anything wrong with people who wear suits. You're going to see me in a, in a t-shirt or a sweater. And if you're okay with, you know my color, you know my accent, if I have one, you know that I wave my hands a lot. I come in with a lot of energy. If you still come see me, chances are we have something in common. And if you didn't, I don't know you anyway. So it doesn't matter. We didn't waste anyone's time. And you know, that's, that's the biggest thing. And thank you for saying it that way. Because I, I try to tell people when they're like, well, not sure if I want to do a podcast who's talking about a friend who's going to be starting one. I said, look, if nothing more, I said, I want you to get this. Uh, and I heard Pat Flynn said this. He says, look, imagine if you had 200 people in a room and you were going to present a one hour presentation for them. First of all, how much would that cost if it was at a, you know, an event space? So it's going to cost you, I don't know, 500 bucks, thousand bucks, whatever it is. You got to try to get the people there. So you got to try to persuade them like this whole thing. It's, as you know, it's not easy to get, you know, 200 people in a room. And he says, every time somebody listens to one of your podcasts or, or whatever, you're getting that. And so forget all this. Oh, well, if I didn't have 10,000 downloads, it sucked. No, you had, you had 200 people in a room or 100 people or 50 people. And to your point, on autopilot, in the comfort or the convenience of their ears or their YouTube video or whatever, and they are, of course, they're vetting you and they're looking at you. And, and so you say, look, I'm weeding out so many people. And for me, there's seven and a half or whatever the number is, billion people on the planet. I'm sure there's at least a good billion to two billion that for every good reason want nothing to do with me. That's okay. <laughs> I don't even need seven million. I don't even need no. 7,000. 
Yeah, you know, exactly. and even from a client standpoint, I don't need 7,000. And so just yeah. that concept of getting really clear to your point, dude, where's, why is he wearing these? What, what, what's, what's that? He's got a white background. Why does he have some fancy thing going on? I, I, I don't want it. I just, just all these different things that people pick apart and you say, who's going to be happy? The people that keep coming back. And like you said, when they come in, they already know who you are. And definitely if you're producing content and people are coming to you, they actually already want to buy. They're yeah. looking for you. And so you don't have, if you don't have a product, then, you know, get a product or, or coaching or something because they're coming to you. It's kind of like, I just remember, you know, like, I, gosh, I'll just show you, it's kind of a personal example, but it's kind of weird. Looked back at an old family video and there was this girl that I was interested in. I didn't realize she was interested in me. I looked back at the family video I'm like, how did I not see that? It's how did you right catch that? Right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's funny when people, if people are calling you, if people are subscribing to your content and doing this stuff and, and that's not sales, it's like, it's like, you're just saying, look, dude, this is who I am. And if you resonate, yeah. if we vibe, that's a good thing. And not everybody's going to vibe and, and, but it's done so efficiently. I think yeah, that's, I, yeah. When I started, I'm so glad I didn't even know that you could monetize a podcast. Like there's, I, I knew nothing about it, right? Like I actually started a podcast first and foremost, because I like the fact that you can talk into a mic and you didn't need to do video. Like now I want seven cameras around. I love that stuff. Right. But at the start, it was like, you talk into a mic. I was like, okay, I've been in sales my whole life. I'm on a phone call. I've yet had anybody, I've, I've yet to come across anyone who said, I don't like your voice. I'm um, not that people said you have the sexiest, sweetest voice jazz. I never heard that either, but I never heard that it wasn't nice. I said, okay, this is kind of cool and it's for free. I did it just so I can be in the, like I, I can send something to my clients. So it was like, even if just my clients listen, um, and 10 of them listen at the start, I would be happy because I've always believed, as I mentioned earlier, it's all coming back full circle, that you can build with it. You, you, you can build with the relationships. You can build out a business very strong with the relationships that you make. That if I had 10 people, that was like my own little sales force, right? It was people who were going to talk about me. I mean, now my numbers are getting bigger, but I don't like, to me, it all comes down to just my clients listening. They're getting educated. I don't sell anything on the podcast. It really is, as you mentioned, to get a better way to get really to be a fly on the wall of conversations that I would already have anyways. I just happen to be recording them now. And so, um, for anybody who's watching and listening right now, if you're not producing content and you're in business, oh, you are missing out on so much. And, and like, I can't just say it any, I can't be any nicer. Like you got to do it. And, and here's the cool thing. We don't all listen to podcasts and or we don't all watch videos. There's other ways we consume content, pictures, animations, written word. There's so many ways you can get your word out, but you gotta get your word out. Yeah. People get to know what you stand for, what you stand, you know, what you're mm -hmm. about, even just simple things like you follow enough people and if somebody even said, oh, this person said this, you might be like, no, that person wouldn't have said that. I follow their content. I know them. I know they wouldn't have done this. It's kind of like if you have a favorite, you know, sports player, somebody that you follow. Uh, dude, thank you so much. So much of this is so, first of all, on spot for what I've, what I've seen um, in my years as an entrepreneur and just as being true. Absolutely love your energy. Where can people find out more about you and keep up with what you're doing and, and, and learn more about how you can help? Best place is to go to jazztakar.ca, uh, J-A-S-T-A-K-H-A-R.ca. I've also started a new text community that I'm very excited about. It really is the best way to get uh, direct access to me. Ask me any questions about entrepreneurship, sales, content creation. Um, it's me. The first time that you go send a text, it's a robot. But then after that, it's always me, direct access. The number to that is 647 Three seven two zero one two six. That's six four seven three seven two zero one two six. And I appreciate awesome. you asking, Wade. Thank you. Thank you, and awesome. And we'll definitely put that in the link. So if you're listening to the podcast, it'll be in the show links. If you're watching on YouTube, it's below. If it's on the blog, whatever it might be, dude. Thank you so much. This is you know, it, it's so refreshing to see people that really still not only understand that giving works, but bring a certain energy and an excitement. And so. I have no doubt the people that work with you uh, are getting to experience a, a level of education of, of experience of that sort of real world MBA. Uh, so congratulations on all you're doing. Thank you so much for coming out. And to all of you out there, again, Jazz said it, I've said it, 
man, start creating your content if you're not already. I waited seven years to start my podcast and then start it three years ago. Start earlier. There's now is the, the, you know, the second best time. It's like the planting the tree. Second best yes. time is today. First best time was 10 years ago or yesterday. Just do that. And as always, look forward to helping you make more money in less time. Do what you do best, helping more people so you can better enjoy your family, your friends, and your life. Thanks for listening, everybody.